Hey, welcome everyone to another episode of our Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. This is Doran Aldana, the Mortgage Marketing Coach, coming at you from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. And today we have a special guest with us. His name is Jay Rodriguez, and we're going to be talking about his story, how he went from $1.5 million to two, rather $4.43 million per month in funded volume in just four months without the hell of cold calling, kissing ass, or chasing realtors. So if you're wondering how the heck that's possible, stay tuned, guys, because you're about to hear it and get the real deal from Jay Rodriguez. So welcome aboard, Jay. Thanks for hanging with us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, brother. So uh, why don't we start off by just having you share a little bit about your story. How long you've been in the game and what inspired you to get into this crazy business? Absolutely. Let's see uh, my story. So I uh, actually got in the business back in October of 2010. The SAFE Act was just being implemented, uh, so meaning people had to get licenses. Um, hopped around uh, as an assistant. My mom started and actually pulled me um, out of college <laughs> and wanted me to go ahead and be her assistant. She was just finishing loan mines and was coming back, had her own, had her own shop for years, and uh, was a die tech baby and decided that, hey, you know, this guy has something in him and uh, I want him to go ahead and really be, be unleashed and be able to go and help me. I think he'd be a great loan officer. So went with her, um, my name's Gina Nichols, and uh, my, like, almost like a sister to me as well as a really great mentor. And she actually had took me under her wing, bounced around from kind of different small correspondent shop to correspondent shop. Um, so went kind of in and out there and then fast forward, I actually in 2013 ended up working um, still with, within different companies with her. Um, ended up splitting off and getting my, I got licensed in 2012, but really was just working with the team um, for her and went to New American Funding where I am today. But uh, I, I didn't start where I kind of engaged with you, Doran, and outside sales and uh, where all the money's at <laughs> and where right. everybody to be able to eat what you kill and be able to uh, be your own boss. I started in the call center. So I started right. with our New American Funding in July of 2013, and that happened uh, right when I tra made that transition. I remember that we had everything happening with rates going higher, right? We had the taper tantrum. So that happened in May. I was making this switch kind of going through. I'm like going, gosh, I can't go ahead and be able to. I was scared of selling. I had no idea what to do. Um, so I was finally going, I need to sell. And I went through New American Funding in July of 2013, what was crazy was that they actually laid off a like half the floor, wow. not a third of the floor, right when I started. So then that's how I go go and now I'm my my own person that I'm going to be in charge of these deals. I had funded a couple family and friend deals before, but I hadn't really gotten out there and we had to go ahead and really sell. It was more of just like, okay, you need to refinance. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go do it. And so I started, and. Thankfully, I was able to burn through about 300 leads of people that had a three points. We're look, looking for a 3% rate, but now we're getting a four, high four or a 5%. No one wanted to transact for the first two months. And I figured out something and started to go ahead and have it go together. But one thing that always kind of was I had been focused on was guidelines. I was always very intelligent in being able to be able to know about looking at Fannie Freddie, being able to learn FHA and VA guidelines. And I was the guideline guy go to. I, I, mm. I came from that college mentality of stu studying up and being able to go ahead and be sharp and be knowledgeable about my business. So I always was looking at, and one uh, that's kind of something that was really helped me in my business, but also to agree, helped me back later on. <laughs> right. Um, and the minutia. But um, ended up doing very well within the call center and ended up kind of going through until making a hop um, shortly, right, really right when I uh, ended up getting married. But that was in uh, really June of 2017 of when I made that transition from being an inside wow. call center salesman to now being outside sales. So um, love my company, still do American funding, uh, and it's the, the best playground that I've seen thus far for my business right now, and they equip me well. But it's, it's the, the, the really the power of always wanting to go ahead and do well with my clients, do well with referrals. I always had a lot of referrals, always had a lot of repeat business, and I really cared because I'm in this business to serve. It's something that I really mm -hmm. have ironed out as a purpose of why I'm here and why I do what I do and what drives me is to go ahead and serve my clients. So it comes off and I get a lot of referral business for that because I'm, I'm not just transactional. 
So right. in, in doing that, I always had a kind of a heart to go outside and what we call Ola, outside loan agent versus Isla, mm-hmm. inside loan agent. And the, the drive for that, um, it was always there. I, but I, at first I was scared when I started. And then I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get better at this. And I was going together. Like, well, what if I was just outside? And then it really started to heat up with business in 15 and then in 16 where I went, I remember my, my income was super, super low um, comparatively now in like 2014 and then it like doubled in 2015 and then it went up by like half again as much in 2016 so it was a great year um and we were going through and always rates were going down going down and we were just going and repeat doing all of our repeat business all of our clients getting new clients and adding that together within our database um and i mainly want to just focus on that because it was just going through and kind of planting these seeds of what's helping me be successful now but mm. luckily in this, I was able to go ahead and still have that mentality and try to drive that together. But now being an outside salesperson, one of the big pieces that I always had was that I had innate fears and a mindset of not being worthy or good enough to go out there and bend for myself. If you, I'm sure no one else listening or watching to this can relate, but they can imagine what it would be like to have fears about going out there eating what you kill on 100% commission with no safety net and, you know, going deal to deal to deal. So they, you know, I imagine they can relate to that just hypothetically speaking, but certainly not in their own life. But anyway, continue. (laughs) So made that transition and it was something in the heart of hearts that I really knew that I was going to do, but I could, I just couldn't make myself do it when it was just like raining money in 2016 with all these refinances, Right. right? And I had been doing purchases but it was really something that would just come and it would just be like, well, you need help me with my refinance because you did my purchase. Of course I can, but it wasn't really targeted towards that. And all my leads coming in were refinance leads. Um, now, game plan, game change, market twisted, right? And 2016 on the tail end, and then I had an extremely dry up from January through March, uh, really January through like June, it was very dry. And I'm like, something has to change. I can know mm-hmm. I had a, a you know, I was used to my Mercedes living and I was really making the income of uh, the Honda Toyota. <laughs> Mac, Mac, Mac and cheese living. Yes. And, um, <laughs> I, I, like, something has to go because it's not sustainable right. and going through. And I've been used to just literally pay off the credit card, pay off the credit card and just like literally and still put money here. I bought my house in 2015, bought it when I was 25. Um, and I'm com- comfortable saying this. I'm 27 now turning a 28 this year. So I'm going through and life was good. Life was going well, but I knew that I wanted to, to go and be outside sales. Um, but I couldn't, I, it just, it was too hard when it was just so easy to just continue doing the same thing. But I right. knew I wasn't happy. I was working my, my ass off. I don't know if we can cuss on this, but I was, sure I was doing not. everything. And it, it, I, my wife didn't see me. Um, I would be working 12, 13 hour days and I would just be working all the time. And it was something where I, I was like the absentee husband, especially during 2016. Um, I gained a bunch of weight. I at the, the peak of it, I actually got to about 254. So How much overweight were you? Well, let's say I met my wife when I uh, mm-hmm. I met my wife when I was 21 when I started a new American funding, and I was 207 when I met her. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the peak, I got to like 258. I think wow. 258. that's what you call ladies and gentlemen, false advertising. When you get hitched <laughs> and then you add a bunch of weight like that, that's false advertising. Folks. Well, 2015 <laughs> to 2016, but there was many pieces where I'd go and I yo-yo and I'd have my weight. I go ahead and do weight loss contest, get it off, go and get it off. But then I would be like, when you're just in that environment where you're just working all the time, you know, you're yeah. out, you're drinking, you're just high stress and yeah success, right? You just can't mm-hmm. do it. You're running a rat race over and over again. And it just was not sustainable. Um, and I'm really so, happy I'm not doing that now. <laughs> so I'm assuming that was right before we met. Is that right? When did we, do you remember the specific uh, month when, uh, you know, you decided to reach out for help? Was it, was it that year? No, it was 2018. It was, I want to say okay. March. Or February, March of eighteen. I want to say when I started gotcha. to and being engaged with you. And so uh, let's, let's talk about like maybe the the week or maybe the month or the the quarter before we met. I'm assuming that the pressure started to mount, that the pain and the struggle and the stress started to mount. 
Tell us about that. Tell us about the the, the frenzy sure. of pressure that started to build that eventually ended up resulting in your breakthrough when we met. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to stretch that a little bit um, from the point of kind of just saying, uh, went and then went outside sales. Luckily, I linked up with someone that was fantastic, who actually um, is someone that has worked with you, Brenda Delenda. Right. <laughs> I went with She's her amazing. I had a great place to go ahead and start getting some of these nugget bombs, right? And um, had really great guidance. But there's only so much that can happen when you're on a team that's larger and not able to go, and she's still producing, still does her own business, right? So she's really right. great at being able to go ahead and give me these little bombs. And there's already some little things that I had already just been on the Brenda system, which is very close to and the Doran system. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, I got, I worked over. with her, I think I worked with her for like four or five years. So yeah, there's a, a big part of her, her uh, monumental success I was the privilege of being part of that behind the scenes. So then, of course, you came on the scene as one of her trainees, if you yeah. will, being mentored by her. Mm -hmm. So that was awesome. What what really but, drove that for me was I kept on kind of seeing, well, like I, I, I would see that she'd be in webinars, that she that she'd be doing these different initiatives that didn't come from her, um, and there'd be different things that she would try, whether it, you know work for her or not, because she you know whether you have someone that's big in business and a big producer. Turning, turning the ship can sometimes take a little bit. And sometimes there's things to try that work or maybe you have to tweak in your business, right? But for me, I, um, I was going through and I kept on having the mentality where I would just go ahead and essentially work with the referrals. But I was scared to actually pick up the phone call and go call realtors. I was scared to go ahead and actually go and put myself out there. I literally was just essentially working the referrals that I had for my previous business. Um, mm -hmm. I was not going through and forging out and having the mentality that I was a champion and a winner and a warrior to go out and project and show, shine my light and be out there. I didn't, I didn't innately think that I was worthy to go start walking through the door and start engaging with those, those agents and referral partners because mm -hmm. of just my mindset wasn't there. And I was just kind of in my office. Um, I was very good at what I did. I did have a couple of good months, but it would be a yo-yo. I would go through, I would do all the minutia. She, I had a loan partner that helped me very well, um, but my, my loan officer assistant, I would still try to do the work for them. It was, I would mm. drive myself and circle around because I, I knew it, I could do it the perfect way. Um, I knew how to do a 1003, I could fight with underwriters, I could be right, I could do it, but then I, I'm just juggling all these different hats and I'm trying to go ahead and do this and I'm not prospecting, I'm not getting business, I'm not working with referral partners. So there's different- You're, you're your own bottleneck. Yes, I was. Right. And um, one thing that I wanted and that really drove me to you, Doran, was that I saw that there was something that had been done um, and there was some model that had been seen through your coaching. And I saw that Brenda had been uber successful. She's in the business for years, right? So she's this big behemoth of a producer, but still she needed coaching. She needed to get there. And the same coaching that she was getting maybe wasn't the coaching that I needed at that time because there's different, you're pe peel back an onion. And mm -hmm. she, as much as you know, she's a great branch manager and a great person to be able to dive in and get deep and do what we need to do, what I wanted, and the reason I reached out was I wanted to go ahead and go straight to the source, see what that is, because everyone gets different things from coaching and everyone gets different pieces. And I wanted to see what was this that Doran you know, met and she said that she remembered going with you to, I think it was like to Fiji or some island, I don't remember, but there was some Hawaii. Hawaii, there you go. And she remembered being there and it was just amazing. And there were so many different things that you like connected with. And I remember that she had been telling about it that, and it, you know, something that she was super excited about and really had been a great place to go and help and crone her craft and get dialed in and refocus and how there'd be times where she'd be going like just super angry or super be here and or there'd be unsettling or just something that was in a funk and then you she would talk to you you'd get her out of her funk and then she'd just be in, on fire and go in her mode and i thought that i want I, i'm i'm seeing all these different things that she's helping me build my business and modeling for me to do but it's brenda's way mm -hmm. i wanted to see how did we get to brenda's way and where's doran's way and how the, can that become jay's way right so that prompted me to go ahead and she didn't even like I knew that about you guys, obviously, of course, because you have marketing and uh, mm -hmm. within, you know, you know, the mortgage uh, mar marketing acceleration group and all this. Uh, but I, I, of course, knew your name, Doran, because I'd see you on the calls. But she right. didn't tell me to go to Doran. I went to you on my own. Right. So, the seeds planted. Yes. 
So what was the most painful part of the struggle before we connected? I mean, there was a lot that sucked about the up and down yo-yo, the roller coaster, the being your own bottleneck and you know, all this. But for the benefit of those who perhaps are going through a similar struggle as you right now or that you had back then, yeah. uh, what would you say was the most painful part of that struggle at that point in your life? I'd say the, uh, the painful part was that I was doing quote unquote well. I was being very well producing within my peers other than Brenda and some other like the branch manager, um, Jessica Saris. But I felt that I was going without direction because I was producing quote unquote, but being a $1.5 million producer wasn't enough for me. That wasn't gonna pay my bills. I mean, mm -hmm. it's up to two a couple times. I think I got to 2.3, but it was like 2.3 and then funding like 500, 500, 700, 2.3, right. the roller coaster, right? So, so it, it went, averaged around one, 1. 1.5 or yeah, somewhere in exactly. that zone. And it just couldn't, it wasn't sustainable and I needed to do something and I wanted direction. And I felt that investing in myself and really having a model that I'd commit to, that I'd be going and having, having that help and that accountability from kind of an outside perspective of it just within my company um, would go ahead and really unleash that for me because I, I was in the place where um, I, I was doing more successful than I thought. I thought when I went outside loan agent that I was going to be not making money for six months, but I thankfully that didn't happen. But at the same time, there had to be an easier way than what the, I was trying to doing and even just going yeah. through and doing what Brenda told me to. I was afraid I, I wouldn't actually go and do all the activities. I would just take the business that came into my email and on my phone. And that's how I was doing this business. I was not right. being proactive. I needed to change that. And I wanted yeah. to, model to do it because being a hidden loan officer that only is, <laughs> you know, just not going out and really eating what the I secret do. agent. Yeah. I was being the secret agent. <laughs> and um, I just, uh, I, I needed something different. It was not yeah. working and it, I, I couldn't continue on doing what I was doing and having that be sustainable. My wife also became a realtor when we got married at the same time I made the switch. So she stopped making her small salary as a real estate assistant. So now here I am and I was wanting income <laughs> and I have yeah. to go on a hundred percent commission. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that had changed and yeah. it's all on, it was all on me and now she's an agent and now she's, um, you know, continuing on to go ahead and be in her career path and really getting traction. So I'm really proud of her. And there's a lot of pieces that can come together that I just, uh, I needed help. I needed something to change and it was not going to be the way that I was doing it. And mm. I needed it to go and have that unleashed. I was really just drawn in by knowing that there was a way and a model. And if I stuck to doing these activities and really just following a model and a blueprint that was not quote unquote the hard way, in terms of the core of uh, just going through and just dial all these numbers. Here's all these pieces. Go ahead and just hit up the cold call. Hit da 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 da. Because I was. But who doesn't love that, Jay? Come on now. Who doesn't love calling There's forty four realtors months. every Monday? Um, I mean, who wouldn't want to bless themselves with the bliss of that every Monday, right? <laughs> it, it gets you business, but at the same time, it's not what I, I go ahead and see in building. And I, I needed to. I wanted to model what had really tweaked and, un and unlocked Brenda, a, a big mentor of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted the source. I wanted it from the source. Right. I wanted the pure, unadulterated <laughs> awesomeness right from the source. There you go. So what, I, what I hear in your story, though, is you got to a point where you just weren't willing to settle for where you're at any longer. I call it the power of positive perturbance. When you get to the point where you're just freaking done doing it the hard way done struggling, done banging your head against the wall, done settling for second best in your life. You just get to that breaking point where you say enough is enough, no more, I've had it. I'm done settling for way less than I'm capable of. I'm done freaking out, frenzied, fearful, worried about how I'm gonna pay the bills, up and down like a yo-yo. There's a saying that what you tolerate, you enable. What you tolerate persists. And most people struggle in life because they tolerate struggle. Mm -hmm. You got to a point where you just said, I'm freaking done struggling. And you decided that you will no longer settle for that. Is that a fair assessment? No, that's the absolute truth. Yeah. So that was like the beginning of your breakthrough right there is when you got to that pain 
of the problem that made you make a decision in your heart. I will not settle for this. I will find a way to win, period. And those are the clients we can help, by the way, guys. Not the people who tolerate mediocrity, not the people that are okay struggling and striving and stressing and sleepless nights and all that, but the people who say enough is a freaking enough. I'm done with the struggle. Those are the people who we can help because those are the people who are willing to do the work to create the breakthrough. So let's talk about now where you're at. I mean, you were hovering between 500K to seven into 1.2 to 1.5. Once in a blue moon, you'll do a 2 million and then you'll vacillate back and forth. So you're in the yo-yo income roller coaster, but your average was somewhere between 1 million, one and a half, right? Yeah. So you got with us, you reached out for help. What was the first thing we got you doing that perhaps you were still feeling a little skeptical about, like, is this really going to work? Really? But you gave it a skeptical try. And what was the thing that you made a skeptical try doing that you were pleasantly surprised was so effective? Tell us about that. Um, honestly, health and mindset. Just really focusing in on who I am, why I'm here, and what's my purpose, and that, that, that identif identity of realizing that I'm worthy of being successful, realizing that in selling and being out, being putting myself in front of others as being able to go ahead and help them, and that the why, reasons why they should work with me and buy from me taking that flip side and being afraid of being a of being afraid of being a salesman and then spinning that to an affirmation of selling is serving. The more I sell, the more I serve mm. and then having that purpose of lighting a fire and letting me shine my light. I had mm. always been too afraid and just for like an innate thing of letting my light shine. And uh, if I got too much recognition, I would self sabotage. It was just like, <laughs> it was uh, wow. weird. And I would like so I would being on this. Forward, I'd be like, Whoa. so being on this podcast is a real display of your transformation because this is not the sort of thing you would do if you're afraid of letting your light shine, is it? That's the absolute truth. I would not yeah. have done this a year ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a beautiful display of your metamorphosis over the last year from someone who would shrink back, take the easy path play it safe, be the quote unquote secret agent, just hunker down in your office and take the you know path of least resistance, mm -hmm. fearful of stepping out there, fearful of what people might think, fearful of making ripples, making waves. And all of a sudden look at you now. And obviously there was a transformation process that happened. You mentioned mindset was surprisingly effective and you were thinking, you know, is this really gonna work seriously, this woo woo stuff, um, you know? And now here you are and being on this podcast is a dramatic display of you opening up and really stepping into your power. So tell us about how that's played out in terms of your business now, because you went from 1.5 million to 4.43 million in four freaking months. So tell us about how the mindset and the marketing has really made a difference in terms of consistently building your production. And tell us about maybe one, two or three things that have made the biggest difference to create that kind of a monumental leap in your business in such a short period of time. Cause I'm sure people are very curious to know. Well, one, was again having that mindset going out there and, and showing up to the you know showing up to to work to life and just realizing that i'm a champion i'm a warrior i'm a winner having that affirmation that i'm doing every day and yeah. um notice I, the words every day guys I have every day right here and right 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 at my place i go ahead and have it on a, a habit app on my phone that it, it reminds me if i haven't done it i check it off as i do it every single morning and awesome. just having that become something of my my my, uh, my mantra as I go ahead and continue on, and how I, um, you know, when I, when I didn't do it earlier on, I I start noticing a big sharp contrasting difference of who was showing up to play today, of uh, mm. what kind of day was going to be there, 
And it's yeah, it's the whip self or the winner thing. self, right? And um, the other piece that came with that was definitely discipline. Was the discipline of my health and the discipline of what I allowed and tolerated of myself. Mm. And um, we talked about weight earlier. What yeah. I ended up doing with my wife about eight months ago was starting a boot camp. And through that, through this, uh, I had this big old transformation both in our relationship as a couple. Because remember, I was talking about working these 12, 13 hour days where yeah. she would have an early schedule. I go to I go to sleep very late and I wake up like around eight o'clock or nine, which I thought was okay, but she'd be up at six. Um, now I wake up every day at 4.30 and we're in the gym by wow. 5.30 and we're worked out, powered in by 6.30, go, come home, go ahead and do my uh, now cold showers that we've added in. And uh, Cold showers, people, cold showers. What is this, some masochism club? What the hell's going on? Waking up at 4.30 in the morning, cold showers, boot camp. This is sounding like some scary shit, man. I don't know, I don't know if I wanna mess with this. This sounds scary. Well, guess what? You want to create kick-ass results. It ain't going to happen because it's easy. Everyone, be, well, everyone wants to be rich, fit, and happy. But most people are fat, broke, and unhappy. Why? Because it ain't easy. But you're stepping into these routines and disciplines, Jay, not as a have to, but a get to. I mean, you got pep in your step. You got sparkle in your eye. You got passion. You got your shoulders back. You're on a mission. There's something that's ignited in you where you say, I'm a winner, I'm a champion, I'm a warrior, I'm an overcomer, I'm a dream achiever. And you're owning a new identity and all of a sudden that new identity is showing up in how you live and your daily routines. And you know that you're a champion, not just because you want it, but because you're stepping into champion level routines. Isn't that right? I absolutely agree. And it, there's so much that I, I I'll guess I have a moment of pride. I was a damn, I was a damned good loan originator and a guideline guru. I knew that. Right. right? <laughs> but I would go back to not letting myself shine. I would only take business as it came in and then I knock it out of the park. But that only is so much business, right? Right. And of course, that's something that you're always just, you get better at, you get better at. But what really unleashed me was having that mindset change of now sharing my light and having it be okay desired, needed, and absolutely necessary to go out and aggregate and get more business. Because yes. I was self, self, I was my self restraint. And it yes. was more of like my self buffer or whatever verbiage you want to use. I was my own block. And yeah. having that mindset differently to go ahead and be able to realize that my calling and realizing how it aligned with going out and sharing that light and sharing, you know, my ability to help others and help people really mm. allowed me to go ahead and flow into more referral partners, more realtor connections, um, start really going ahead and being engaging. Um, I had always kind of done public speaking, but I went and I joined Toastmasters. I went and I started doing all these presentations where now um, it's come to the point where I'm, I'm here now um, as a preferred lender in a couple different offices and I'm going through- Three now, uh, is it not? Um, Two or at this point. Two, there's, there's two and I think there's one percolating on the side. There's one percolating. Um, yeah. Ink's not written as of the time of this podcast, but it's um, coming. Case, it's allowing me to go ahead and have the ability to be okay with helping others, being not just having it be okay, but being something that I desire that becomes a passion. And I was used to be very passionate about working on the files, working on the the little pieces, like what can I do to go ahead and fix this? And I mm. want to do everything. I want it to be perfect has to be perfect every single time. Um, but then realizing later on and through your program that I'm just being trampling over everything. I'm doing the work three times over because I've checked in the beginning, goes to my loan partner, and then I go ahead and check the work and then do the go get the processor gets it. I check the work, mm -hmm. let me go fix it. I just want it to be absolutely perfect. I want it to be sense of what the borrower right. from the beginning to the end. And does it always need to go ahead and have that much work? And does it need to go ahead and be there? Or does it need to, like, there's there's so much that you can do where as long as we go ahead and get somebody that is maybe even be better than me at what we're doing, as long as I can go ahead and do what I do best and then I'll steal your verbiage, go ahead and get the, you know, get the best for all the rest. And yeah. um, now I'm, I'm at the point where it was at the stage, of, it was me before. It was me. I'm now at that point where I'm getting to we, and I could see myself getting to them very soon in mm. terms of building that team around me to go ahead and engage my clients, have that customer service, 
being able to go in and have it be a well-oiled system where I'm able to have everything orchestrated because I can't do everything by myself. It's impossible. No. Well, right? you can if you want to make 50 Gs a year, by all means, oh. or even 100, even if you want to make 100 a year, you can, you know, you can be cool. the chief cook and bottle washer and wear all your hats, right? Yeah. So you, it's, it's you can cool. be a slave to your business doing that. Absolutely. But that's, that's not, not what you want to settle for. It's not what I want. It's not why I'm here. Um, and it's, it's, I'm not going to put up with that. So I, I want to go ahead and I am, I'm building this team around me. Um, I have an amazing loan partner that um, in this, um, and she's actually been with the company longer than me. And we nice. it's so, you want to be so cohesive and work together to be able to go ahead and have that wonderful, amazing experience for my clients and for our borrowers to be able to really just have that imprint on these lives and touch these lives and be able to be there. And I, I'm excited to go ahead and continue that. And really, it comes back to me being called to serve and just mm -hmm. taking that, flipping that switch of knowing that I can go out there and by me going and helping and being a part of that family, whether that's a refinance, maybe that's a, something that's going ahead and really just they're in a hard pinch and I'm able to go and make something happen that someone else said, you're never in the world going to qualify. And those saying, looking at their situation, actually listening and being able to do that, help them and maybe go ahead and put they thought they wanted to go in this direction, but they really needed to go in this one to show that through them through education and be able to go and have the numbers and the know-how to be able to listen to what they want and saying, okay, this is what you can do. You can do X, Y, Z, but maybe Z is mm. going to be able to help you have them take that path. Same thing comes with buying a house. There's so many options. There's so many lenders out there. There's so many programs. And even if we're talking about the same program, some people might just take the path of less resistance. I really focus on having that educational piece of being able to see why are we doing different things. But it mm -hmm. takes the village to go ahead and have a loan fund. Now, I'm very blessed to have a wonderful place where I was able to plug and play. But even with an amazing team behind me, within Brenda the Lenda, being on, under this umbrella branch, right? I still was my biggest roadblock in getting people through the door and between being able to actually help, uh, be helped by me. But by now being empowered by my team members and not being stuck in the minutia, now I'm focused more on marketing. I'm focused on automating. I'm focused on it. Now I have this. What is one way that I can go ahead and do less but have it be more right. effective? How do I go right. ahead and start taking these systems and replicate it? How do I go ahead and be able to do X, Y, Z? And one thing that is uh, kind of just an idea of the difference in where I am now versus where I was you know, when we first met, I was always in the office. I lived in the office. I was always mm -hmm. on my phone. I was always on, I, I was consistently working and churning and burning. I thought I was working, but I was just slaving away. Where now right. I'm at the point where I'm in my office maybe two days a week. I'm wow. uh, traveling, I'm out, I'm doing presentations. I am um, being a, being around uh, you know agents. I am really just going out and I'm, in, I'm out in the world, I'm, I'm driving all around. And that's what I need to be able to doing to go and be that rainmaker, to go ahead and start getting in the business and working on all of, of uh, my deals. So now I have my team that's working on everything as it comes in, am I still involved? Absolutely. But it's just kind of going through this place of building this system that's able to go ahead and be executing everything the way that I do my loans and imprinting that. And I'm actually having my first uh, junior loan officer that's starting with me actually Monday, which I'm thrilled and passionate about. I've been working with you on this for the past really like three months of just um, right. visualizing and having, how am I going to do this? What are the tracks? What do I do when I have him here? So that I'm going to be able to have a, have a plan for the first 90 days to go ahead and have that be pretty successful and plug and play it into my business. And at the same time, have it all wired in to be able to have that plan. Whereas before, if I had, um, what I had, I, I went from no assistant to having a loan partner uh, before you. And what I did, I did everything myself. I didn't empower them, right? Right. I, I basically made them do little minutia, double checked and triple checked their work and went through and really held them to a too high of a standard without giving proper instruction and not giving right. empowerment to go in and help me. We're now or systems or policy or procedure or protocol, just a download from Jay. You know, the show up and throw up download from Jay. Are you serious? I told you this once before. You don't remember? Come on, let me show you it again, right? It's and exactly. and uh, it reminds me of a, a quote I dropped on the Facebook group recently. It's, if you're a control freak, you're actually out of control because you lack freedom. That's the thing about being a control freak is you got the mantra, if I want it done right, I got to do it myself. But you have no freedom. 
you have a perfectly done loan, but you have no freedom. You have no scalability. You don't have a real business. You have a glorified job trading time for money on the time for money treadmill. That's not a real business. That's a practice. That's a, a J-O-B that enslaves you. And so, Jay, the transformation, not only in your health with shedding all those pounds um, and you waking up earlier and getting to the gym and doing the, the, the boot camp and having your wife be part of that. So there's been a transformation in your relationship and you getting out of your little hovel, your little cave and opening up and having the mantra, the more I sell, the more I serve and shining your light and having a heart centered mission that you're really to your core committed to because it's who you are and it's what you're called to that has your business be an expression of your calling of your purpose, not just about closing another loan and making another commission check, but it's about making a difference in people's lives, being heart connected to a mission and your business becomes a vehicle to fulfill that mission and to make that impact and to have that influence and to have that difference that you're making in people's lives and to have you show up every day on mission, on purpose, bringing your light, shining your light, growing, expanding, delegating, leading, recruiting, training, empowering, having other people on your team, not just so you can get them to do the minutia, but have them on the team to liberate you so they can dance in their strengths. So you're liberated to dance in your strengths so you can operate in your unique ability. What a transformation shift from where you were a year or two ago. It's absolutely transform. It's like you were in a cocoon. You're this little, you know, scared and very much stuck in the comfort zone caterpillar that knew you were called to more, knew you were capable of more, knew that somewhere inside of you, you had wings, but you didn't quite know how to operate them. You're in this dark place of suffering and pain and stress and frustration. And then all of a sudden, out came the wings and you took flight because you decided that being a caterpillar crawling around, groveling for business, settling for chump change was not acceptable. You decided that you're a butterfly. You decided to see yourself as someone who can soar to higher heights in your life. Not only that you can, but you will. And because you can and you will, that by virtue of knowing to your core that you can and you will is now a must. We don't get our shoulds, we get our musts. And because you decided that it's a must for you to win, that's really the genesis of your transformation. Sure, we're giving you kick-ass systems, marketing tools, know-how, templates, campaigns, wicked effective strategy, all that's fine and dandy. But the genesis of your breakthrough, my friend, is that you shifted it from just being a should, I should win, to I must win. True? That's the absolute truth. Because yeah. like what you said, you could have everything where it's plug and play in the world, you could have everything given to you, but unless you go ahead and take that and have that determination where that becomes, there is no way in hell that I'm going to do anything but move forward, but win, it won't execute. There's no passion. There's no power behind that. Mm. And it's something that I was very good at executing if I had that permission to go in and do it in that little space but I was bottlenecked because I would not liberate myself and allow myself to project forward and do that. Mm -hmm. So what's the best part of you now stepping into your power and letting your light shine and expanding your team and empowering your team to liberate your, to, you to dance in your strengths? What's the, what's the most glorious part of this new season, season in your life now? What are you most uh, excited about? What are you most uh, jacked about? Tell us about that now that you've stepped up from 1.5 million to 4 million plus and you've got all the systems and team and momentum. Tell us about what are you most excited about in this season in your life now? Well, one thing, my wife gets to see me more often and I get to see her. <laughs> right? That's huge. I, I, I get to unplug. I used to remember that I would be sitting there just on my phone all the time going like, okay, CD, 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 what's going out? What's happening? When are, like, did this go ahead and get touched? And now I'm not focused on that. 
I know that there's certain pieces, but I'm really only trying to go ahead and have the touch points in the very beginning, making sure that everything's perfect in terms of that we have it dialed in. We have a plan, the perfect, the perfections in the plan. And then yes. the execution happened from marketing orders, um, marching orders, as well as procedures. Then being very involved, if there's anything to go ahead and restructure, being involved in that, and use my expertise there, but leveraging the help and support to be able to let my mind be towards creativity and towards what's ways that I can go ahead and work out there and bring a new business and connect with agents and help empower their business to turn on the leads to turn on the prospects and the ability to serve mm -hmm. more of those people and their clients so that I can go ahead and have everything be working forward as opposed to just focusing on scarcity of I need to go ahead and get these deals funded and then I can worry about it later on getting the new right. business because of the real coaster, the real coaster, right? Because like, I wouldn't be able to go out and work with the referral partners, focus on really what can I do to drive business generating activities and I, I didn't have the time to do both. By now having these systems in place, I have this wonderful borrower experience where we still close extremely quickly. We still get everything fantastically done and have that marketing touch and that quite, kind of the white glove approach to handle for our clients and for our, our the people that we're serving, but also going through and be able to help generate more business for these agents, for my, my realtors, and really be able to go ahead and, and help them. So it comes down to helping them, serving them, as well as serving their clients and having it be a multitude of reaping the benefits of being able to go ahead and have that service be put in place because it's kind of putting those uh, reaping what you sell right it's going mm -hmm. through, absolutely planting those seeds of prosperity and being able to go ahead and see what the beautiful creation has happened and it, it is hard work there's i still do you know pull days right now where uh, we're at a point where it just happens to be another refinance boom so go yeah. figure and, and i have it stacked up and it's going through but at the same time i'm still getting my purchase immediately work done there's a process for it where we're doing everything together. We're not people letting letting people slide through the cracks. And at the same time, we're still serving the people with, with the systems in place and automations where I'm not going through and calling all of my past 600 funded loans and going call, 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 call. Hey, did you this opportunity? Hey, there's an opportunity. Hey, there's an opportunity. I'm going through and having systems in place to go ahead and be able to help my clients, help my, my referral partners, and serve my, my new clients that are looking to go ahead and buy maybe their first No more big man marketing, Jay? No oh, more caveman, old school, you know, so hanged on marketing, just picking up the phone, smiling and down all day. Come on now. There's lots of brownie points at the bank for working harder for your money, is there not? Come on now. Why don't you just stick with the old school way, the tried and true, you know, 20th century method, like all these other coaches out there are training you to go out there and pick up the phone and dial 40 realtors every Monday and do the caveman marketing. Come on now. Why do you need to get all with this techie stuff. Isn't it better to just pick up the phone and do it the old school way? Well, that's exactly what most of our so-called marketing experts out there are training guys, doing it the freaking hard way. And I know I sound facetious because I am. I am being facetious. They're doing it the hard way and they're training you guys to do it the hard way and you're being fed a bunch of BS that that's the way to do it. That's the caveman style guys. We're in the 21st century. Let's use technology. We can send people to the moon. Why do we have to pick up the phone and cold call realtors every Monday? That's retarded. That's retarded. There's so much automation, systemization, streamlining, and ability to have the system work while you're not working. Why do it the hard way? Why trudge through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet if you don't have to? And as you can see, Jay is definitely a technology user. That's been a big piece of going from 1.5 million to 4 million plus is using technology and leveraging it. And uh, Jay, as we wrap up here today, I just want to salute you for who you are in being someone who's willing to take the courageous leap into the unknown to feel the fear and do it anyways, to invest in yourself, to have the courage and the testistical fortitude, if I can call it that, of saying, screw it, let's do it. And to do the hard work and to show up coachable and committed and to believe in yourself and to day in and day out, remain faithful to the call and remain faithful to the dream. And to have that mantra that if it is to be, it's up to me, to have that extreme ownership mindset is a big piece of why you've been so successful. It's been a delight and a privilege to be part of your journey and be part of your breakthrough and 
Of course, now you're in the Seven Figure Lender Academy, so we ain't done, we've just begun. We're entering a whole new level of monumental avalanche of awesome in your business and in your life as we journey together in that. But to see you blossom and to unfold into such a powerful man of contribution is just truly a delight and a privilege to witness and to be a part of. So kudos to you, brother. Super proud of you. Thanks, Dorian. Definitely appreciate everything that you've done for me, uh, for my, gosh, my health, <laughs> health right. and marriage as well as, uh, as business. And it's just, there's so many things that you don't even realize can be better. You don't even yeah. realize that you're able to go ahead and reach that new level. And, and you, sometimes you can't even fathom what that could be. Or you wonder like, gosh, I'll never get there. You'll have this, all this negative self-talk and realizing that there are steps and start, just start, first of it starts with that mind because we yeah. have everything, we can do everything with this. But having that limiting belief and having the, li the limited negativity that you're having within yourself of not empowering yourself through the use of technology, empowering yourself through helping and serving others and empowering others to help you and accepting that help, you, it, it all starts here. And yeah. that's why we, we focus on really what has been part of my breakthrough and that's been having the ability to go ahead and have that litmus test um, within you and be able to go ahead and see what do I need to do? Why am I here? Move forward and be able to identify my purpose, my why, and, and really connect and have that be my driving force and let my light shine. Mm -hmm. Amen, brother. So for someone listening or watching uh, this podcast who's you know, been picking up what you're laying down, they're digging it, they can relate to your story, your trials and tribulations. Uh, they're at a place where they're just really fed up with the way it's been. They're just spinning their wheels and they're frustrated and they're banging their head against the glass ceiling and their way ain't working. But yet there's still this apprehension, this fear around, you know, is it worth it to do coaching? I've done coaching before. I don't want coaching. I just want marketing. I just want some lead generation. Um, is this really worth it? Is it worth the investment? Should I do it later? Maybe I should save my pennies for a few more months until I, you know, can cobble together enough of a budget so it's not too much of a stretch. Um, we're short on time. So for the sake of brevity, maybe just give that person one minute of your thoughts on what you would speak to for someone in that place to really set them on the path to their breakthrough based on your experience. To that, I would say examine where you are right now. And if this stayed there and if you had that wall and if this was going to be what you have, is this something that you can stand? Is this something that you're able to go ahead and accept what you are in this place right now? It wasn't for me. I wasn't going to accept that. It, it came to mm -hmm. a place where that was not what tolerable anymore. And is this something that you or can stand? I couldn't stand it. Find that place within yourself and realizing how do I thinking every day? What's going on? It, it, and really just knowing that are you looking for something else? Are you looking for that the way to have the mentality? to go ahead and be that champion, to be a warrior? Do you wake up every day just jumping out of bed and going through that cold shower, doing your workout, getting it together? Are you loving what you do? Or are you just slaving away at what you're doing and having it be a, a practice, having mm -hmm. it be a job, not having it be a passion? Um, that's you, then th there is an answer. And I know that that answer for me was doing the work with you, Dorian. So I really, I really thank you. Awesome. Well, it's truly a joy, a delight, a privilege to be part of anyone's breakthrough we don't work with the interested the interest all the interested always find an excuse we work with the defiantly committed because they always find a way but there's something very unique about you jay in your gratitude in your taking ownership and responsibility for your life showing up coachable and committed resourceful decisive and uh I just, uh, I, I praise God for the opportunity to be part of this journey with you and uh, to now have you be a difference maker in other people's lives and have this endless cycle of awesome just continue. 
anyone can count the number of seeds that are in an apple, but only God can see the number of apples that can come from one seed. And I can only imagine the amount of people that are going to be touched through your life and your light shining as the months and years that God gives you pass and you fulfill your mission of selling is serving. And the more you sell, the more you serve. It's mind boggling, just the far reaching ripple effect of that. But I am in awe of it and I'm excited for it. So let's keep rocking it, brother. And uh, keep being awesome, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely, Doran. Thanks for having me here. And uh, you know, thankful for God every day. Uh, you are a part of my life, and I can't wait to go ahead and see you very soon. Never been to Canada. Now I get to. Yes. We've got a Seven Figure Lender Academy event happening in Kelowna in uh, June. So it's going to be sunny skies in summertime in beautiful Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, bringing some of the best clients on planet Earth to that event to mastermind, roll up our sleeves, get to work, full immersion, coaching, masterminding and uh, helping each other elevate to that next level, both both personally and professionally. So I'm super stoked about that, uh, to be part of that with you, Jay, along with the other students in the program. And um, if you guys are listening or watching right now and you'd like to learn how we can help be part of your breakthrough or to see if we are the right fit to help you create your breakthrough as we were for Jay, I invite you to take the very first step that Jay took several months ago that caused an avalanche of awesome in his life that allowed him to quadruple his production and get himself a set of six pack abs, being overweight to fit, trim and motivated and on fire and on purpose. You wanna learn what that, what that spark was that set him on fire. I invite you to book a call. You can book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, just the way you see it on the screen there, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It's a complimentary breakthrough call with either myself or one of our consultants where we lift up the hood on your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, uh, where you're at now in your business, where you want to be. And if we can help you bridge that gap, by all means, we will show you how to do that, give you the prescription for breakthrough. And if for, if for whatever reason we can't help you, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we'll also have some fun. So if that sounds like something you'd like to take advantage of, if you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired of being stuck where you're at, I invite you to book a call. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. Jay, thanks for hanging with us. Thank you for sharing your story. You're an inspiration, brother. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Dorn. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is uh, Dorn Aldana and Jay Rodriguez, the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast, coming at you from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. And again, go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you'll get massive results, guys. Go forth and engage, you guys. Peace. Make it a great one.